Hey lovelies, it's MLP with Lovely Lulu Designs, and in this video, I will show you how I created this split seamless water slide glitter wrap tumbler. I will teach you the techniques and materials you need to print your own seamless water slide wrap designs at home, including how to tile a repeatable design using free open source software, as well as how to wrap your water slide for a seamless look. I will also cover how to cut, weed, and apply intricate designs in layered vinyl. For the layered vinyl, you will need a cutting plotter such as a Cricut or Silhouette machine. If you like this video or find value in it, please like it and subscribe to my channel. If you're new or existing subscriber, please make sure to click on the bell icon so you're notified of all future videos I release. With all that out of the way, let's get started. For this project, I'll be using a 30 ounce skinny tumbler from DAT Merchandise. These tumblers do not have a taper from the top to the bottom, which makes them very easy to wrap. These are pre-prepped tumblers, which means they come sanded and primed with a white base coat. Since I will be making this project with white glitter and clear water slide, I will be keeping the background white, but you can always paint the background a different color if needed for future projects. If your tumbler does not come pre-prepped, then you will need to sand, clean, and prime your tumbler using a spray primer or a paint and primer in one in order to get a solid foundation for your tumbler art. To get started, I need to section my tumbler. Using a measuring tape, I will measure four and a half inches from the bottom section. I will be using the all-in-one tumbler tool from Cowbell Custom and the pencil attachment for this to make a straight line which I can follow while I'm sectioning the tumbler. To use the all-in-one tumbler tool, I simply place the platform on the edge of my desk and line up the tip of the pencil with the pencil mark I made at the four and a half inch mark. Then I lock the pencil in at that height by turning the knob at the back of the arm and slowly spin the tumbler, keeping light pressure on the tip of the pencil the entire way around. I'm going to use this pencil line as a guide for where I will lay my painter's tape. Placing the tape below the line, I carefully follow the line until I've gone around the entire tumbler. Then I make a small fold in the tape so I have an edge that's easy to pull when I'm ready to remove the tape. Using my thumb, I put pressure around the top part of the tape to make sure there are no gaps and the tape is fully adhered to the tumbler so I don't have any issues with glue bleeding under the tape. For the top half of this tumbler, I will be adding glitter from M & Cat Glitter Factory in the color Diamond Dust in two different cuts, fine and extra fine. I am using Mod Podge and a foam brush to apply the glitter the a Taclon brush would work really well for application as well and is usually my brush of choice. When applying the Mod Podge, I am being careful to make sure I have smooth, even application and that there are no clumps or thicker lines of the glue. If your Mod Podge is uneven, your glitter will apply unevenly as well. You want to work fast since the Mod Podge dries very quickly when applied thinly. I'm going to start by applying my coarser cut of glitter which is the fine cut, since I want this to be my primary glitter. After I apply the fine cut, I tap my tumbler to allow any excess glitter to fall off and then apply the extra fine cut to help fill in any gaps in the glitter. I will now set my tumbler aside and let it dry for approximately half an hour. After the Mod Podge is dried, I use a fan brush to brush off any loose glitter and I check for coverage. If I don't have full coverage, then I will need to add a second coat of glitter. In this case, I needed a second coat, so I began by applying Mod Podge directly over my existing glitter layer and then adding the fine cut followed by the extra fine cut of the diamond dust glitter. With the glue still wet, I will remove the tape so I get a nice clean glitter line. Just like before, I will set my tumbler to the side to fully dry. Since the glue applies thicker on a second coat, I'm going to wait at least an hour before I brush off the loose glitter and apply a brush on sealer to seal my glitter. I prefer Quick Coat from CCDIY, which is also available through m Cat Glitter Factory for this. I use a Taclon brush to apply my sealer and once again wait for it to fully dry. When the sealer is dry, I will apply a coat of epoxy to the entire tumbler before adding my water slide. The water slide will not adhere to just the prepped surface and needs the epoxy for good adhesion. Since I have shown you guys the epoxy process in many videos already, I did all of my epoxy work off camera but here's a link where you can view one of my videos dedicated to the epoxy process. Now that the tumbler is ready for water slide application, I can measure the circumference around my tumbler to print the water slide the best size possible. As a side note, I wanna mention that you need to make sure you only measure once you're ready for application, 
since adding glitter, epoxy, or other mediums will alter your circumference and your measurements. You also want to make sure that you measure for each project and never assume that a measurement that worked for one tumbler will work for another if you want to make a true seamless wrap. I will be using the Easy Peasy Measuring Tape from Burntwood Solutions for this since I find it gives me the most accurate results. But even with this, when working with water slides, I usually size down about one line or 1 16th of an inch since the measuring tape is thicker than the water slide. I also make sure I am measuring a straight line so I'm following the bottom of the glitter line when measuring. In this case, my measurement was 1 16th over 10 inches, so I sized it down to 10 inches. The design I will be using for this project is the Apples, Flowers, Books, Teacher, Education, School 30 ounce seamless tumbler wrap. Since the design is seamless and we will be tiling and cropping it, you can use the 20 ounce or standard repeatable pattern version available too if you would prefer or if you already have it. This design is one of my newer releases and is available on both my Shopify and Etsy stores. Since this design is only being applied to the bottom part of the tumbler, I don't want to lose some of the details in the pattern, so I'm going to scale the pattern down and tile it. If I were using this design as a full wrap, I would skip this step and use the design as is. To tile and crop the design, I will be using an open source software called Inkscape, which I will link in the description section below. This software is completely free of charge. The first thing you will need to do is open your file by going to File and selecting Open. You will then need to locate where your file is stored. If you're using Windows, it will most likely be in your Downloads folder. Once you've located your file, select it and press Open. With your file open on your artboard, you now need to select your file by clicking on it and change your units of measurement to inches so we won't need to calculate any conversions. Next, select your file and drag it over to one side of your artboard to make room for a copy, then right-click the image and select Copy, and then right-click again and select Paste. A copy of the image will now appear on the layer above your original copy. Select the new layer and move it to the edge so the corners lock together. This will give you a seamless pattern. To merge the layers into one, select both layers by clicking one layer, holding the shift on your keyboard, and clicking the other layer. You will notice the marching ants at the seam, which tells you these are two separate images. Go to Object in your top menu and select Pattern, and then Objects to Pattern. You will notice the marching ants down the middle of the seam have now disappeared, showing you this is now one merged image. Before adjusting the dimensions, make sure the lock icon between the width and the height is in the lock position by clicking on it. Then select your width and resize it to 10. Your height will automatically resize itself proportionately as long as the lock icon was in the lock position. Next, we need to crop the height of the design to the four and a half inches we measured at the beginning. To do this, I will select the square icon from the left side menu and just drag a square onto the artboard. Using the direct selection tool from the left side menu, I will click on the square and select it and unlock the lock icon between the width and the height so I can set my custom dimensions of 10 inches wide by four and a half inches high. To align the layers, I will select the align and distribute tool from the top icon menu which will open a right side menu where I can select align vertical and horizontal center for each layer individually. I will then need to select both layers, which I do by using my mouse to draw a box over both items. If you do not draw over the entire item, the item will remain unselected. Then I will go to object, clip, and select. You will notice it slightly resized the image. I don't know why it did that, but I will just go in and manually adjust the width and height to our needed dimensions. At this point, you can either print through Inkscape or you can export the image to print from your preferred software by selecting File, Export PNG Image. I do recommend printing a test page before printing on your water slide paper. The water slide paper I use and recommend because of its incredible durability is from Newfound Finishes. When purchasing water slide paper, always make sure you are purchasing the type of paper meant for your printer, so either inkjet or laser. If you are printing with an inkjet printer, you will need to seal your printed water slide images with a few coats of clear spray sealer prior to placing the paper in the water or your ink will run. If you're using a laser printer like me, you can skip that step. Next, you will need to cut out the design from the rest of the water slide paper. To do this, I use a paper cutter. My paper cutter of choice is the Fisker SureCut because it has a wire that shows you exactly where the blade will cut so you get a far more accurate cutout. 
These are available on Amazon and I will link the item as well as all other items I used in the description section. To use the cutter, simply line the edge of your design with the wire, being careful to line it straight with the edge and simply slide the blade down. Repeat this process on the remaining sides until your design is completely cut out. If you place the cutout water slide on your tumbler, you will notice there's a gap at the seam. Don't be alarmed. This is normal because the backing paper takes up space. Once applied to the tumbler, the water slide will act like a skin and can even be stretched a bit to fit in place. It is easier to work with a seam that is slightly too short because you can usually stretch it a bit into place than one that overlaps because then you will lose the seamless appearance. Dip your water slide into water. It is best to submerge the entire water slide at once but I didn't have a large enough container nearby, so I just soaked the paper in sections. I do this until the water slide freely separates from its backing paper. When the water slide is ready, apply a small amount of water to the tumbler in the area where you will be applying the water slide. Next, line the water slide up on the tumbler, just below the glitter line, backing paper and all, and try to get a straight starting point. This will make application far easier. Slowly ease out the backing paper, looking for bubbles or wrinkles as you go. Work in small sections, smoothing the water slide as you work. This process is easier while the water slide is wet, so if you need to, you can put some water on your hand to avoid tearing the water slide while you rub over it or try to slightly adjust it. You can also use a silicone brush that has been dipped in water for this as well, which is my personal preference since I find it easier. As you get closer to the seam, you will need to start gently sliding the water slide together. You do this by pressing out any water trapped under the water slide, pressing the sides closer together as you go, being careful not to tear your paper. I gently slide the seams together from both sides until the seam is touching, being careful not to leave any gaps or to create an overlap in the water slide. Since the water slide is clear, an overlap will be visible as that part of the water slide will be darker. When I'm happy with my seam, I check again for bubbles and wrinkles and press them out if needed. To measure for the charm chain, you follow the same steps as you did for the water slide. This time, I'm lining the easy peasy measuring tape to the top of the tumbler, being sure to pull the tape as tightly as I can, and once again measuring down 1 16th of an inch. I'm using my divisions of an inch chart for easy decimal place reference to size my cutting machine software. This is a free printable file available exclusively on my Shopify website. The designs I will be using for the top section of this tumbler are the school teacher education charm chain, specifically the five charm chain, and the quote, extraordinary teachers plant the seeds of knowledge. Thank you for helping me grow. These designs were made to be complementary to each other and they are available on both my Shopify and Etsy stores. Since I will be cutting these designs with vinyl, I will need to import them into my cutting machine software, which in my case is Cricut Design Space. Once imported, I need to rescale my designs. So I start by locking my proportions by clicking the lock icon and then resize the quote, to 3.5 inches wide. And then selecting the charm chain and rescaling it to 10.18 inches wide. You will notice that at these sizes, the quote nests perfectly between two of the chains. To make sure the decals will cut with the same color vinyl, I am going to isolate the quote and ungroup it by right clicking it and selecting ungroup. 
Now I can select each individual color and recolor it to match the charm chain. With the apple selected, I click on the red box next to basic cut. This will show me all the material colors that will be used to cut the design. I choose the same red as the red on the charm chain, so these will now be cut from the same red and will be sorted onto the same cutting mat. I do this for each of my colors until I have no duplicate colors left. Next, I will select Make It, and the designs will automatically be sorted onto their cutting mats by color. I preview each mat by clicking on it, and if I see vinyl will be wasted, reposition the items on the mat and can then send the mats to the cutting machine. When applying the decals, I prefer to start with the charm chain since I find it easier to center the quote to the charm chain than it is to center the charm chain to the quote. I begin by weeding the black base layer of the chain and then I apply the transfer tape. Next, I use my scissors to cut away excess backing paper and tape, being careful not to accidentally cut the vinyl. Then I remove the backing paper and cut it into small sections. This will allow me to apply the charm chain one section at a time which I find makes it easier to keep the design straight and achieve a seamless pattern. When placing the backing tape back on, I apply it so the tops of the charm chain are exposed. This way, I can see where the chain will be starting from the top of the tumbler. When lining the decal up to the rim of the tumbler, I want to make sure I am keeping a small space between the vinyl and the rim so the vinyl doesn't compromise the seal of the epoxy. I am checking to see if the space between the rim and the top of the charm chain is consistent and that both ends the design line up. When I'm satisfied, I remove one section of the backing paper and apply the vinyl in that section. Then I check my placement again and repeat the process working one section at a time. This allows me to make small corrections as I go. While applying the decal, I pull the tape tight and check the placement before using my thumb to press the vinyl securely to the tumbler. I am checking for bubbles or wrinkles as I apply as well. If the design has shifted during the application process, simply peel back the last section applied and realign it. When I placed the last piece down, I wasn't quite happy with how the ends were lining up, so I peeled back one of my sections and adjusted. You'll notice I'm making sure the tape stays tight so the decal is being applied in place and not shifting. I'm very picky with placement, so I actually ended up doing this twice before I was happy with how it looked. When you're satisfied with your placement, remove your transfer tape, being careful that all pieces of the decal remain adhered to the tumbler. Since the design has delicate lines, you want to be careful not to accidentally tear or stretch the vinyl. Once the tape is off, I use my tweezers to place the small sections where the vinyl meets in perfect alignment for the seamless look. I do apologize for my head getting in the way of this shot. Finally, I press down all the pieces to make sure they are secured to the tumbler. To add the color layer details, I use small pieces of transfer tape to pick up the pieces and place them one by one directly on the tumbler. Once the charm chain is finished, I am ready to move on to the quote. Since the quote is an intricate design, I am going to weed the quote from directly off the tumbler. I do have a tutorial dedicated to cutting and weeding intricate designs, 
So if you want a more in-depth explanation of this process, including cut settings, I will link that here. I always find it easier to start by removing the smaller center sections of the writing prior to placing the decal on the tumbler or applying the transfer tape. So that's what you see me doing here. If you do it this way as well, be aware of fine lines that may be problematic. You can always weed those from the tumbler or transfer tape if needed later. When all of the small pieces are weeded away, apply a piece of transfer tape to the entire cut of vinyl. Cut away any excess transfer tape and remove the backing paper. I am going to reverse weed from the transfer tape the top section of the design only so I can see how the design fits between the charm chain and also so I can make sure I apply the decal straight. I cut my backing paper in half before reapplying it so I can use the hinge method when applying the decal, which basically means I apply one side of the design at a time. This helps me apply the decal straight and avoid any air bubbles. You will notice I cut away a small piece of the backing paper to allow me to see where the spacing between the flourish on the top of the design and the charm chain are. It was at this point I noticed the leaf on the bottom was too low and I had to cut it away to fit the decal. Remove your transfer tape and be careful none of your decal comes up with the tape. Carefully and slowly start removing the excess vinyl paying attention to the design so you don't accidentally lift any pieces you don't mean to. Unfortunately, when I was removing my transfer tape, I didn't see the section of a letter that came up with the tape. Since the missing piece of vinyl was an independent letter and not a piece I ripped from another letter, I will just put it aside and replace it later. I sometimes find it helpful to make small cuts with my scissors on the edges of the vinyl so I can control the section of vinyl I'm weeding and I'm not trying to weed too much at once and make mistakes. Once the quote is fully weeded, I layer on the colored pieces just as before. Since these decals have a lot of small pieces and I have water slide on the bottom section, I'm going to add a coat of Quick Coat Brush On Sealer to help prevent epoxy repelling on the water slide and to help prevent small pieces of vinyl sticking up under the epoxy. When the Quick Coat is dry, I will add one thin coat of epoxy to properly seal the water slide before adding the pin striping. Once the epoxy was fully hardened, I realized I wanted to add a glittery bottom without adding too much bulk to the tumbler. So I began by taping off the bottom of the tumbler and following the water slide line to get a straight cut. Next, I added diamond dust to my epoxy in the extra fine cut only and applied the mixture with my gloved finger. After application, I placed my tumbler on my turner, torched the epoxy to remove any air bubbles and removed my tape before the epoxy had a chance to harden but after it had set enough to no longer be runny. Since the glitter was mixed in with the epoxy, the glitter was already smooth and sealed and I was able to go straight into pinstriping. I used a black nail tape to pinstripe the bottom but forgot to hit the record button when I turned my camera on but I will show you how I do it on the center band. To separate the top and bottom sections and make them pop more, I'm adding a black band with green holographic pinstriping to the center. I measured the black band with the easy peasy measuring tape and I cut it from vinyl. I start by aligning the band up to the seam between the top and bottom sections. The straighter your starting point, the easier this will be. Then I carefully rotate the tumbler and lay the vinyl down, adjusting it to make it straight as I go. You want to keep the tape tight enough in your hand so the tape will lay flat, but not so tight that you stretch the tape out of proportion. 
If you stretch the tape too much, the ends won't be the same thickness and your seam won't match. Once the vinyl is laid and I'm happy with the application, I use my thumb to press the tape firmly to the tumbler for good adhesion. For the pinstriping on the black band, I'm using a green holographic nail tape that complements the rest of the tumbler. I follow the same steps as before, lining the tape to the center of the black band this time. With all of these details now on, the tumbler is ready for final coats of epoxy and to be gifted to my son's teacher. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and tickle that little notification bell so you'll be notified of future videos I post. Subscribing is completely free and helps me create more tutorials like this. Thanks again for watching and I'll be back for more Tumblr tips and tutorials.